here all my principles were vilified. Here I find no respect. Everyone speaks his mind. I call a beggar's den a household of this kind. Mother, daughter-in-law, I will have you apprised that your behavior is wrong in all and quite ill-advised. You should be a model to all exemplary, a task their late mother found easy but to do. You are but a fool, my grandson, a minion. Trust me when I say so, I am your grandmother after all. As I told my son, your dear father, your manner and your type belong to the rabble, and you will never bring him anything but trouble. I think heaven, the sister now, so quiet and demure. You would have us believe you are so chaste, so pure. Still waters in your case run muddy, and I fear that all your chastity hides the devil, my dear. Only. Oh, you, my girl, are nothing but a maid with too much of a tongue to be wise, I'm afraid. On everything, it seems, you have an opinion. Tartuffe has on his mind a right of preemption. He calls him his brother, loves him in his soul, far more than his mother, wife, son, daughter, and all of his every secret, Tartuffe's the confidant of his every action. Tartuffe's the commandant. He hugs him and pets him. He'd show less tenderness if he mistook the man for a loving mistress. A good man who speaks well and must be listened to. Two days ago, Madame had fever until night with the strangest headache, which gave us a great fright. And Tartuffe? Tartuffe, he is strong, fit, and healthy. Rested and overfed, he couldn't better be. <laughs> the dear boy. To truly enchant you and force you to pay heed. He's a man who, oh, a man, a man indeed. In him who trusts his word, profound peace will mature, and he will consider the entire world like manure. What? I should suffer that an insufferable bigot govern us with power tyrannical? And why aren't we allowed the slightest levity if that little man feels it offends piety? You must, as punishment, be wedded, my pretty. My dear, dear woman! No. You know he's not the one. Peace. Tartuffe is your man. This cannot be undone. Tell me what I should say to see you mollified. Help me! No, it is done. You will be tartuffied. Did such a project find a place in your heart, madam? I do not know. So what is your counsel? My counsel, madam, is you should bite the morsel. Is this what you advise? Yes. Truly? Would I lie? It is a perfect choice with which you should comply. Very well, my dear sir. Then I will do as you please. Since you like my advice, you'll follow it with ease. The same ease that was yours when you gave it to me. I, I gave it to you? But to make you happy. And I will follow it, to make you ecstatic. As for me, what I want is just one word with you. An open heart exchange that would give me a... Sir, you are squeezing me. Would you remove your hand? Oh, sir, stop. I tickle easily. Humans, for the most part, are strangely adjusted. To recognize the truth, they cannot be trusted. The highway to reason, for them, is too narrow. The bone is not enough. They're after the marrow. And the noblest of things they will often shatter because going beyond to them is the matter. Ah, you think him a saint? 
but that is fantasy. My word, he is nothing but pure hypocrisy. Too long has this rascal sat in my father's chair and interfered with love for both me and them. Yes. In him, our prince recognized the known crook who by another name was noted in his book. And there's a long record of many a false deed that could fill a volume. Or more than one, indeed. Oh, but have you forgotten that my own charity pulled you out of your state of rank austerity? A poor, wretched sinner, full of iniquity. The greatest of scoundrels for all eternity. Every speck of his life is but another stain. He is a criminal, a blackguard, and a villain. Imposter! The dear boy. <laughs> <laughs>